want to use for a thought to center this message around last seen alive. Last seen alive. I want you to focus, if you would, out of all that was read with purpose, I want you to see verse 67. Will ye also go away? In 66, many of his disciples, and this is in reference to Jesus, son of the living God who had the largest following ever. After speaking spiritually because the book of John although a synoptic gospel which means all four gospels support each other speaks about the spirituality of God through the Son, Jesus Christ. Jesus is very plain, especially in the book of John, the beloved disciple, and making sure we understand that every last one of us in here right now did not come by our own decision. You came because God wanted you to come. Amen. That's enough right there to celebrate if that's where we were going to anchor or not. But that's enough to celebrate that God wanted you to meet his son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Tell somebody you're here by divine appointment. You're here by divine appointment. Mm, some of y'all won't have to carry eviction notices. I keep telling y'all you got bad neighbors on your road. They won't talk to you. Find somebody that'll talk to you and tell them you're here by divine appointment. Which simply means that everything you are dealing with, going through, encountering, challenged by, God already knew when he invited you to meet his son, Jesus Christ. What is interesting is don't have time to play with this, but what is interesting is we don't have an accurate number Amen. about how many walked away. Amen. Isn't it something if you could just think back over your life and, and, and line up how many people walked away? Amen. I believe you lose count, but Jesus didn't, can, can we talk? Amen. Jesus didn't even try to count how many walk? Uh -huh. I see I'm going to have to work today. Jesus didn't have a role. He didn't have a scroll with all the names of people following him from everywhere. If you would read this from its opening, you would find out that where Jesus is in John chapter 6, they all took ships trying to get to him. Amen. And when he wasn't in one place, they listened for where he was so they could get back on the ship yeah. to get to where Jesus was. And when they arrived, Jesus says to them, you are not here because of me. You are here because of the fishes and loaves in which I fed you that you read about in the book of Matthew and Luke. I got to find a church that reads that Bible. It is interesting, yes, Lord, I will. It is interesting to always find out when God points out who is in your life because of your abilities. I know this is a, a year 
uh, where we got the great turnover, so it's good that we are starting this off right. You need to know who's there because of the gifts you have. Because of the abilities to bless somebody else's life or increase somebody else's life, you need to know they are not there because of you. It's because of something God gave you. And that don't mean you get to pull back, step back, disappear, leave off the scene. No, 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 no. That means what you're doing is the right thing. But don't look for your return from the people that are only there because of your gifts. Because of your abilities. It's going to come from somewhere else. This term 12, and I promise I'm going to try to keep this as short as possible. I don't want to hold it too long. This number 12, which is the number of government. You had 12 tribes of Israel. You had 12 heads over the 12 tribes of Israel. You got 12 months in a some of y'all understand and you're working with me. Twelve is a significant number to God, but we won't really play with it. But I want you to see that it is within the text that this number twelve is brought out. That it is brought out because God wanted them to hear and also for his disciples to hear. He had twelve disciples and when he brings it up, he brings it up trying to remind the twelve disciples when the disciples see the rest of the people walking away. Don't forget that you was on the ship with me that fed them same people that are now walking away. You 12 had 12 baskets full after feeding over 5,000. I ain't got nobody to talk to in here. This is why I said never look for your return for your abilities from the people you bless because they have the tendency to walk away. But God will always have something left over Church folk don't know when to celebrate. I wish somebody would clap their hands and say, God, thank you. Because I got more than four than I even imagined I would have in the first place. He looks at the twelve and says to them in 67, Will ye also go away. In other writings it is, will ye leave me also? Amen. It is interesting because in the book of Timothy, Paul says to Timothy in chapters 3 and 4 and in 1 Timothy chapter 1, he warns Timothy that there shall be a falling away. We gotta find a church that can 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 walk it all away. I won't bye -bye. Yes, Lord, I will. I want you to see that Jesus started ministry, didn't start church. And if we are following in the footsteps of Jesus, Mark the perfect man for the end there of his peace, if we are following Jesus, then you need to know if they walk off from the bread of life. Amen. I don't understand why you feel people ain't going to walk out on you. How, how is it now that we have this foreign gospel that is coming across the pulpit now? here, but other places, I guess, that have filled your mind with the thought that when you follow Jesus, everybody's going to love you. Everybody's going to get along with you. Everybody's going to stick to you like white on rice. People going to stay with you like red Kool-Aid. I want you to understand that you are going to go through changes, and if they left Jesus, if they walked away from Jesus, you better Everybody that walked away. God, give me a church that'll push me. 
I, I, I gave drink and healed and raised up dead folk and opened blinded eyes and unstopped deaf ears from the folk that turned around and walked away because they could not understand that I was trying to take them to the next level of relationship with me and God. Uh, when you look at somebody and you got a good neighbor and tell them people will not stick with you when you are getting ready to take it to the next level. Uh, I need you to understand uh, that, that when you read now in 1 Timothy and when you read 2 Timothy with all the warnings that Paul gave to Timothy, one of the biggest ones, he said, he said, I need you to be instant in season and out of season. For the time will come when people who are in the church will not be able to endure sound doctrine. They, they will not be able to take God's truth and be able to deal with it, live with it like these here in John 6. This is a hard saying. In other words, there's some things now in scripture that God requires that we don't want to swallow. Lord, I thought I had me a church that wanted to take it to the next level. I want God to do this great, big, tremendous turnaround in my life. But what God is requiring out of me for me to get the turnaround and the turnover and the lift and elevation, I think is going to fall. It's not too much to ask God to deliver my family and heal this one and save that one and bring that one off the street and they're getting ready to die. Give them life and God, I need another job and I need a raise and I need a better car and better facilities of living for me and mine. But when it comes to what God is asking out of you, it is always a hard Now the neighbor and say, neighbor, get over it. <laughs> Either you don't get it or you are not going to get it at all. And you don't have to accept what God is asking for. You can always want I knew it was going to be a little tough. You, you, you can always walk. You can always leave. You can always go away. But I, I need you to understand that when you walk away, you have now become what is called an apostate because you are committing apostasy. Apostasy is uh, really just a big word that is um, brought down to a humble saying that you have now decided that after you have gone through baptism in Jesus' name, in filling of the Holy Ghost, and that with a mighty burning fire, following the rules and doctrines and standards of God, you have now decided for whatever the reason at this point and walk with God, I am no longer going to do what it is that God requires out of somebody that belongs to his house. I'm going to leave his house. Go do what I want to do my way and I don't want nobody that's in his house that know me, know my name, know where I live, know my number to tell me otherwise. Because now you have started walking in apostasy. And I need you to understand that when you walk in apostasy, you have now moved to a position where you have now withdrawn yourself from the body of Christ, which means you lose all the benefits that come along with being a child of God. It is, it is, can I go a little deeper? Let's go. It is one thing when you are struggling or battling or going through changes and challenges trying to develop yourself so that you become a better child of God altogether. I got I got some hang-ups. I got some issues that God is beating me over the head with to get right so that I can become what he needs me to be, what he called me to be. It is another thing altogether when you have made up your mind that I have in my head whatever it is in my head and ain't no Nobody gonna tell me anything different. 
from me. I believe what I believe. I know what I know. I'm going to say what I said, what I said, what I said, whether it's something you like or don't like. That's how I feel. That's what I think. And that's what I'm going to stand on. But if you have withdrawn from the body of Christ, you need to understand that you no longer hold any weight with your words. Lord have mercy, I'm getting in trouble. You, you got to understand that God will take time and requires us to figure out how to reconcile ourselves one to each other, how to forgive when there is an ought. But when I have withdrawn from the body of Christ, you ain't got nothing to say to me because you don't want to hear things according to God's standard. I knew it was going to get tight. I knew it. You, you just want to be rowdy. You just want to run your mouth. You just want to raise your fist up. You just want to go wherever you want to go. Do what you want to do. Be what you're going to be. But God is requiring a higher standard out of somebody that's calling themselves a child of God. Not the neighbor and say, neighbor, please hear me today. I have made up my mind. I'm not walking away from God. Uh, I, got, I think I got three and I'm out of here. It is interesting because Peter, Peter, Simon Peter, says to Jesus when Jesus answers, asks the question, will he go away also? He said, where are we going? Amen. I, I knew, I knew Seth would get disturbed in it, wouldn't it? So, but where, where are we going? In, in other words, what's left? So Simon Peter says, I need you to know Jesus, just like you asked us at Caesarea Philippi, who do men say that I am? I'm going to be the very one that stands up again to answer this question right here. And if God allowed for me to recognize you, when you ask who you are, then it's got to be God now telling me to answer this question. Because I know if I walk away from you, ain't nowhere else to go. I, I already been a fisherman. I've already brought in fish. But when you came into my life, I caught more fish than I ever caught in my life. I shipped too strong that I should have died in. Where else is left for me? Oh, let me bring it home. Let me bring it home. How many of you in here can say, I ain't got nowhere else to go. I ain't got nowhere else to go. I, I done tried the club, I done tried the streets, I done tried drinking, I done tried smoking, I done tried hanging out, I done tried partying, I done tried skipping, I done tried dipping. I ain't got nobody to talk to me in here. Is there anybody in here that can say, I am guilty? Uh, but as guilty as I am, I know I ain't got nowhere else to go. I wish I had me a church I could talk to in here. As messed up as I am. I know I ain't got nowhere else to go but God. But if I leave him, I know I'm going to get worse. And I ain't got no hope for tomorrow. I wish I had me a church I could talk to in here. Another neighbor and say, neighbor, I ain't got nowhere to go. Nowhere, nowhere. It's here. Peter makes it plain. Where are we going? Who else? Got the words of this. If, if I leave, where else I'm going to go where somebody going to speak to me when I'm in a position of death and speak life so that the position I'm in does not kill me. But I'm able to go through it until you tell me you learned your lesson come out of there. I got five that are talking to me in here.
Jesus must 
be thicker than your family's blood. I wish I had a church I could talk to right here. Even though we have a whole bunch of issues individually, collectively, we are the family of God. The moment I stop praying, I have left the faith. Because what am I talking about if I'm not talking to God about my faith? Uh, uh, in, 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 in Rambo, I thought it was funny. Uh, I can't remember the number. Just just before the last one, I, I'm a Rambo fanatic. But just before the last one, where he was back in the states, he, he was uh, I think they were somewhere in the Philippines or something of that nature, and some missionaries, some missionaries, uh, had never seen war. Amen. Never seen the ugly side of it. They knew what war was, but never seen the ugly side. Trying to find a boat that would take them to this hostile area. Amen. Everybody went to said, no, no, no. They went to him and he was like, no, you don't want to go there. You're not ready for it. They kept talking, kept talking. So one of the females went in it. She wasn't trying to get with him, but one of the females was just trying to appeal to his humanity. People are hurting, people are dying, they need us. He said, but you don't know that people are being killed over there. And they're walking. Yes, Lord, thank you. It'll get worse if you show up. Oh, God, I can execute that right there, but I'm going to be not telling the neighbor. If I show up, it might get worse. He finally says, you know what, I'm going to take it. The leader of the group was just hard on them. Just, just treating them like scum. Like garbage, like, like trash. Because he couldn't understand why you wouldn't have done it willingly the first time. Rambo ignores them. He's on the boat, taking them where they gotta go. They run into a moment on the way. I'm just giving a little short story, then I'm gonna leave you with two things we have. See, I'm going to run out of time, but I'll pay you back next Sunday. The first boat shows up. And if they find the Americans, everybody did. Ain't no discussion. Gone. Shoot them. Kill them. Throw them in the water. Take the boat. We gone. Rambo. Play little dumb. Say, put your hats on. Cut your face. But they see the gold here. So they get ready, go in the changes. Rambo walks on, pulls out the big Rambo knife, kills the guy. Everybody did. I had to ask myself, give me a church that can hear me. Why would you kill everybody on the boat? They would have let you go and just kill the American. Why would you jeopardize? Give me a church I can talk to and dang ready. Why would you jeopardize your life for people who don't even like you, don't believe in you? And, and, and when the female asked, Are you okay? Why did you kill him? He said, If I didn't kill him, they would have killed you. He said, and I knew what you were trying to do was a good thing. Even though you don't know what it's going to cost you. Lord, I got to get out of here. Another neighbor, I, I really got to move. Another neighbor said, neighbor, I'm helping you. And even though you don't know what it's going to cost you later, I'm going to make sure you get the way you got to go. When you go to the final destination, you don't take no money, no nothing. They get on off the boat, they gone. He moves over into a little cold, a little cut. Trying to make sure they all right. Guerrilla warfare takes place. M80s are dropping everywhere. Growing up, men, women, boys, girls, it's a crazy movie. If you don't like that kind of stuff, don't watch it. But if you can watch Lifetime, you can watch it. Yeah. 
He showed up on the scene. Can we go? Now, the people who have never seen the ugliness, yes, sir, of trying to help people in a place you don't belong have really come to grips with we should have listened when we were warned that it will get bad if we show up. Yeah, I got two things that I'm going. I can tell I done lost some of y'all with the movie. Another neighbor say, neighbor, I'm fighting for people. I get that neighbor an addiction though. Don't talk to them no more to the end of service. Talk to somebody else. Neighbor, I'm fighting for saints. I'm fighting for brothers and sisters. And don't even believe I'm fighting for them. Praise and I love prayer. 
Oh God, I love prayer. I love worship. But when for me, I can't, I can't talk about nobody. Oh God, for me.